live from the piazza at Quinnipiac University. It's Late Night with Kevin Carroll. Tonight's guest, Philip Cunningham. And for the improv group, The Right Amount of Silence. I'm Tom Valerio, and here's your host, Kevin Carroll. That's better. That's better. Hey, hi. How is everyone? Good to see you guys. Good to see everyone. It's been a while since our last show. A lot's been going on. I don't know if you guys have been following uh, the, the missing Malaysian Airlines flight, but uh, passengers of uh, the famed Flight 370 were cleared this week of the possibility of any terrorist activity. Unfortunately, they couldn't be reached for comment, but I'm sure they're all very relieved. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're going there. Sorry, guys. Taking the dive. Oh, nice. That wasn't planned. Jeez. <laughs> We're going to move on to the next joke. Uh, a woman in Tennessee drove straight through a church, stabbed her husband at the altar, and blamed the devil for the whole incident. Said witnesses, eh, it was nice to get out of church early. <laughs> Witnessed a murder, but we missed the sermon, so you know, give and take. Uh, this is somewhat biblical. A Kentucky man Expecting to receive a routine circumcision was shocked when his entire penis was severed. He says, that's the last time I go to the mall supercuts. <laughs> if I had a nickel for every time I've gone in there for a little off the top just for them to butcher it, ugh, be every, a rich man. Literally every time I go to supercuts, I have to get my penis re like I know, penis. it's yeah. like you, you can't skimp on it. It's, go to a salon, guys, that's what we're trying to say. Anyway. Uh, and don't skimp on your phones either, like people in Romania seem to be doing, where the Windows phone in Romania has outsold the iPhone. Even Ethiopia is like, guys, really? No. <laughs> the Congo's over there like, sidekick. They got sidekick, the, jeez, sidekick that thing. is a relic. Remember those things? Do those still exist? I don't, I don't think so, maybe. You could probably get one on eBay. What is their slogan? For like $4,000. We used to have it all. We used to have it all. They were the best. <laughs> T-Mobile, we used to be awesome. They're, yeah, they're, they're still banking on that. Uh, a San Francisco radio station, this was in the news last week, played Nelly's Hot in Here for 20 straight hours. The station DJs were shocked when the callers continuously made the same request until they found out it was just Al Gore trying to raise awareness for global warming. <laughs> It's getting hot in here, guys. I am super cereal. Man birthday. <laughs> Thank you, that one person back there. <laughs> Tom needed the self-esteem boost. <laughs> a 22-pound... <laughs> Hi. A 22-pound cat in Portland, Oregon, trapped its owners in their bedroom until police could arrive to detain the feline. Investigators are still trying to figure out who was being the bigger pussy. <laughs> That's right. Speaking of big pussies, Fred Phelps, head of, <laughs> that could have taken a turn, right? But Fred Phelps, head of the controversial Westboro Baptist Church, has finally perished. Yay! All right, he's dead, guys. Come on, you're not excited? I am. Officials say that they'll wait at least three days to see if he'll rise from the dead to protest his own funeral. That's what I heard God hates douches, Kevin. Yes, he does. That's true. Well, he'll, he'll be going to hell. We'll see him there. We will. That's fine. We'll have a beer. Look forward to it. Uh, <laughs> did you guys hear about this? A 260-pound woman strutted down Hollywood Boulevard in a bikini to show women that it's wrong for them not to have curves. I guess it was only a matter of time before that belt of stars roped a planet into the orbit. <laughs> she was big, guys. Let's, she's two of me. I'm like 95 pounds. Jeez. <laughs> Earlier this week, speaking of bodacious bodies, David Beckham was named the world's number one underwear model. I'm very sorry, Tom, but there is always next year. <laughs> do we have a, uh, do, we, do we actually have a, a, a picture of Tom's? No, we don't. <laughs> oh, do? oh, there he is. How'd you get a picture of me before I went to bed last night? That's weird. Tom, that seems like you were posing for that, let's be honest. That doesn't, can we get that back up? Please. Didn't, didn't Just look leave it up there for the rest of the show. Did, yeah, why not? <laughs> why not? Doesn't, doesn't look very candid, Tom, considering you're oiled and black. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say you were ready yeah. for that one. Yeah, you, you got me a little bit. Well, hope you guys are ready for this one. We got a great show for you. It's our second to last one. Come on, guys. Let's go. Give it up. <laughs> Tom. 
Tommy, Tommy, Tommy. Yep. Yep. That should be your LinkedIn profile picture, I think. <laughs> I'm thinking about it. Uh, it's a very good move. You and I, Tom, we've been looking for love in all the wrong places. I, I guess. There yeah. wasn't, it wasn't behind that fireplace. No. It wasn't in the, the Tater Hall bathrooms. <laughs> Kevin, I've We've no checked idea. everywhere in between, <laughs> but mostly those two places. Um, <laughs> but you know what I realized, Tom? Is that people really like it when you just give it up for free. And that's what we did here in this segment we call Free Hugs. Let's check that out. Unless you're under 18, please shield your eyes. <laughs> I've been on this campus for a few years now, and I've noticed that some days people aren't all that warm and welcoming. Well, I've decided to change all that. You know, when I first came to Quinnipiac, I thought I was just gonna blend in. I was gonna be another number in a, in a crowd of faces. But it turns out, I've got a gift. You know, some people are, are beautiful painters, or breathtaking writers, or hilarious late night talk show hosts. Me? I'm an amazing hugger. I'm just trying to have a pleasant day on the quad, you know? Spread some joy around. Maybe get a girl's number, probably not. And all of a sudden, this nobody shows up and starts taking away all my business. You know what we call people like him? A big fat jerk, that's what. A wise man once told me, if you're good at something, never do it for free. And when I found out prostitution was illegal, and after the health center gave me something for the burning sensation, I found a new legal passion in life. Hugs. What is this for? No, no, I had no idea he was soliciting hugs for money. The only contact that I've had with him over the past few weeks is through Candy Crush. He could be kidnapped or eaten by a giant bobcat for all I know. Huh. I mean, everybody knows Kevin gives the loosest hugs, so when Alec opened up shop, it was really a godsend. I mean, this guy could get away with charging three, maybe even four dollars for a hug. That's how top-notch this quality is. Yeah, I hugged Kevin once. It lasted for like three seconds. But well, when I hugged Alec, he embraced me, and it was just so magical and wonderful, and I loved every second of it. Well, that was total bull****. Oh well. Back to you guys in the... Well, back to you guys in the studio. All right, hey! That Alec is such a what? always. Can't stand him. Yeah, he's a piece of one of my least favorite, but uh, good thing he's not here. Um, you know, Tom, we at Late Night are modest in saying that we're the most hilarious people on this campus. Um, I, I think so. And that's, you know, it's not saying much, but we, uh, we have caught some flack recently uh, for this show, saying that we're, we're offensive or, or inappropriate, uh, which may be true, but, you know, that's... What do you want when we're them, right? Tom in, the, in this underwear? Yeah, well, <laughs> them, yes, I agree. Um, but you know, Tom, I, I decided to sit down and put an end to it all. I had an interview with none other than John Alba, uh, just to clear the air, folks. So if you're offended, please just watch this video, and you'll understand my feelings on the show. Um, and hopefully, you know, you'll just beat me up for my lunch money next time, rather than badmouth the only thing I have to live for. So please enjoy. Take a seat. Come on up here. Hi, Tom. How are you? All oh, right. Good to see you. Great to see you too, Kevin. Well, this is a nice surprise because uh, they told me I was interviewing the uh, the co morale chair, but you're more of a human than a chair. <laughs> what? What did you just say? That are you out of your mind? What's wrong with you? You cannot say that and get away with it, Kevin Carroll. <laughs> you. Breaking news tonight: as mediocre late night television host. Excuse me. Late night television host Kevin Carroll is under fire for his accusations that he is insensitive towards chairs. A Quinnipiac student filed a complaint to the NAAC, that is, the National Association for the Advancement of Chairs, claiming that Carroll came off as, quote, kind of a dick, end quote, when he maliciously and ignorantly attacked the credibility of chairs across the country. 
Peter O'Stool, head of the National Association for the Advancement of Chairs, released the following statement. For years, chairs have lived in the shadows of tables and ladders. Kevin Carroll's clear lack of concern for the well-being of chairs across the world is more insulting to us than the concept that people think he's actually funny. We will continue to rest under the backsides of 500-pound men, but Kevin Carroll, you no longer have our four-legged support. My client, Kevin Carroll, finds these accusations of insensitivity against chairs to be absurd. Yes, Kevin isn't all that funny, and we know he's not any good at basketball. Hell, the fact that he even has a show may be shocking to some. Dude! <clears throat> right. I'm sorry. Okay. But my client is not prejudiced against anything that can be found at Ikea. Except for love seats. Because those things are just the worst. I'm here on the Quinnipiac campus where the Westboro Baptist Church is protesting late night with Kevin Carroll. Joining me now is a member of the church. Sir, what are your thoughts on the allegations surrounding Kevin Carroll? I think Kevin Carroll is an awful person. What he's doing is wrong. It says so right in the Bible. Where does it say anything in the Bible about disrespecting chairs? Does it matter where it says anywhere? He is an awful person. He is everything that's wrong with this country. Him and Obama and the liberal agenda are ruining everything. Kevin, thank you so much for joining us today. I know you have a busy schedule. Actually, you know what? You're a late night television host. You don't actually do anything productive for our society. In fact, you're kind of pretty low on the totem pole. So I'm just going to head right out to the gates here. Uh, what are your thoughts on chairs? Well, first of all, can I say this, John? Uh, shouldn't you be a little bit more concerned with how this is affecting your image as GM of Q30? Uh, isn't this kind of making you look like a fool? Kevin, I'm here to ask the questions. You're here to provide sure. answers. What are your thoughts on black chairs? Listen, I, I'm just going to come out and say this. I am mostly indifferent to chairs of any color. It doesn't really Even matter. brown chairs? Brown chairs, black chairs, rolly chairs, love seats. I don't care, John. I mean, I, in fact, they're kind of all right with me. I mean, I... Sitting is one of my favorite hobbies. What are your thoughts on chairs in terms of how they come to be? Do you feel that they're born that way, or do you think that being a chair is a choice? Do you seriously want me to answer that? I, I, I guess it depends on the all factory right, that they're right, made all right, in. All right, all right, all right. I'm going to show you two pictures. Sure. And I want you to tell me which of these pictures you think is more awful. OK, all right. Subject A. Yeah, and, and subject B. <laughs> you know what, John? This is this is absolutely ridiculous. First of all, easy answer, but this is absurd. I can't take part in this anymore. And you know what? I have something I need to get off my chest to you and to all you viewers out there. You see, we here at Late Night have one goal, and that's to get you, those folks at home, watching this on the YouTube to laugh and to have as much fun watching this program as we have making it. You see, that's what life's all about. So open up your mind a bit. Read a book. Go for a walk in the park with friends. Have a catch with your old man. Hey, try on a silly hat. Whatever you think. The possibilities are endless. And that's what makes this country such a wonderful place to live. Kevin, that was beautiful. I've never heard something so poetic and elegant in my life. And I think after hearing that, society will forgive you. Thanks, Have John. it here, my friend. Yeah. Ah! 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 Fucking chair! What the are you doing, you piece of shit? Your father doesn't love you! Ah! it! Wait! No! All right. All right, guys. Well, we're going to take a quick commercial break, but when we come back, we have another great segment for you. We have a performance from The Right Amount of Silence and an exclusive interview with Professor Philip Cunningham. Stick around. <laughs> Thank you. 
I could really go for a Ray and Mike sub right now. Come to Ray and Mike's and try our Philly chicken with cheese for just over $4, giant cheesesteak subs, and mouth-watering boar's head sandwiches for as low as $4.75. Cue cash accepted just a mile down the road on Whitney here at Ray and Mike's. I want you guys to save that applause and help me welcome, some of you have seen him in class, Professor Philip Cunningham. He's a great dude. Hey. Hey. Professor Cunningham. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Almost oh. broke the light again. Come on up. Get up here. <laughs> hey, all right. Cool. Jesus. All right. <laughs> Hello. Hey, how's it going? How are you? Oh, pretty good. It's, pretty it's good. going. It's barely, but <laughs> it's going. Um, so you are, you teach, uh, you, you're in the sports studies program, is well, that correct? Main, mainly is media studies. Media studies, um, that's but, right. But uh, this fall I'll be co-directing the sports studies program. Nice. And you are going to be brought on as a, a full-time faculty member. Yes, sir. I must say, as a man who will soon be unemployed, I'm very impressed. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy being employed, which yes. might end after this show. But oh, well, you know. If you rub it in our faces a little bit. I think you'll get a new job acting after we show the next segment, but uh, we'll, we'll wait on that. Don't worry. Um, so the sports studies program, what exactly happens in those classes? Because when I, when I imagine it, I just picture a bunch of athletic meatheads and you <laughs> sitting on a couch, like watching football and somehow getting course credit for it. Is that what's I happening? I think if you ask most of my students, they'd probably say, yeah, that's about accurate. Nice. Um, I sit in front of the class, make up stuff for about a half hour. Sounds good. And then let them do all the heavy lifting after awesome. that. So, yeah. Um, but in, in sports studies, we, it's interdisciplinary. So there's a couple of different ways we um, approach it. I teach mm -hmm. sports media and society. Okay. Um, and so in that, we basically look at the intersection between Sports, media, and society. Okay. Um, <laughs> so it's a pretty that fun class. People seem to enjoy it, and Alba almost ruined it. But uh, that days. sounds about right. But I, the, the first thing that came to my mind, sports, media, and society, was the, the devastating impact that uh, Brett Favre's uh, infamous penis picture. Nice. Was that, did you guys dive into that at yeah, all? Or? Right in. Right he in. He head first. <laughs> head first. Okay. <laughs> and uh, all right. Recently. Uh, on a, on a non-credible blog, Quinnipiac was ranked number one safest school in America. <laughs> Probably on BuzzFeed. <laughs> is that the voice of God? <laughs> Sounds this is a very biblical lot. episode. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> it's already, it's already better than Noah. <laughs> Yeah, oh, yeah, right? He, uh, I don't know who that was, but if that's God, he sounds like a, a lanky virgin. Um, I might have to find a new religion. But anyway, safest <laughs> school in America. If you guys are wondering how it stays that way, people like us. This is a segment we call Hall Monitors. Check it out. Slow down there, all right? Someone's going to get hurt in these halls. No respect around right? here. You know, I've been, uh, I've been at this job for, well, most would say too long. But it's all about the rewarding experience you get from keeping these halls safe from scum like that lady. Oh, and these two. These two guys. Straight out of Urban Outfitters, huh? Is there something going on there? Yeah, I think uh, a little question. bit of the nose candy, huh? Yeah, what was going on before class? Yeah. Oh, look at that V-neck. That, that, that thing is, that is a that's plunging. There's a plunging V-neck. Pure leaf? Your leaf, uh, huh? Is that, is that right? Is that the only leaf you got on you today? Uh, exactly. Is that, are you consuming now in, in liquid form? Is that how it? I've seen it come in a mini form, but that's I can't right. say I've never seen it in liquid form. You have your medical card, sir? Fashion violation. Uh, we need yoga pants and a uh, stack. That's, That's right. right. Where's your North Face, ma'am? Do you really go here? Orange is the new black, huh? You ever see that? Well. You know what's going to be the new black, too? It's probably. White's going to be the new black, too. That's right. That's a racial thing. You're going to jail. I'm sorry, guys. Who are you again? Oh, wait. We asked the questions about you. We asked the questions. Right. Hands on the table. Oh, you have rights now. And I have some lefts. That's right. Why don't you move along? 
Proceed cautiously. Wet floor. That's right, sir. Do you mind if we uh, we take a look in your bag here? Um, go ahead. All right. What's going on there? Oh, 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 she's a little afraid. What's going on here? You can, you can bet on the make those tricks. That's right. But you can't, sir. That's, That's right, right, sir. So, so don't bring, bring race oh, into this. Oh, you, you didn't make the joke. joke. You didn't make the joke. You didn't make the joke. You didn't make the joke. Well, that's not what the notes say. Yeah. Good, good law abiding citizens don't need excuse. Look at this one. Look. Oh, oh, Ben, come back. Get all buddy buddy now. Oh, that is assault on an officer. I am out of control, ma'am. What's gonna happen to you? He used to be a student just like you. You know what he is now? Dead. 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 Dead from walking on a wet floor. Scum. Generally. Can't stand them. They, they don't, don't pay us enough, enough for this job, job Phil. Phil. All right. All right. We are going to take another commercial break, but when we come back, we have a performance from the improv group, The Right Amount of Silence. Stick around, you don't want to miss it. The Bobcat Shop, located at 1010 Sherman Avenue in Hamden. Your number one choice for Bobcat merchandise. The Bobcat Shop features two floors of countless styles and colors. With a full 19,000 square foot screen printing and embroidery operation on the premises, Campus Customs and Simplify can design and decorate any garment or promotional product as quickly as needed. Stop in and say hi. Never mind. Folks, we have a performance right now from the right amount of silence. Hopefully the name doesn't become painfully appropriate after this performance. Uh, but give it up. They're an improv group. Hey. Look at that. Hey guys, we're the right amount of silence. Uh, we are an improv group on campus. This is some of us. We have a 20 person large improv group, probably the, the biggest improv group around in this campus. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, my name's Dave. I'm Sean. I'm Tom. I'm Alec. I'm Gerard. I'm Zach. All we need to get started is a word from the audience. So guys, just shout out some words and we'll get started. <laughs> pancakes? That's all you got, pancakes? Cowboy, pancakes, cows. 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 Cowboy, pancakes, cows. and cows. Cowboys, Cowboys pancakes. And cows. Cowboys. Cowboys. Pancakes, pancakes. And cows. And cows. <coughs> oh, just a very, okay. What are you getting there, hon? Oh, I'm making you some pancakes for our anniversary, oh, baby. Oh, that was today. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> and I'm making you your favorite pancakes. It's in the shape of a cowboy hat. You know me too well, honey. Um, I... <laughs> I kind of invited the guys over to watch the big game tonight. On our hey, Tommy! What's up, man? We gonna, we gonna watch the game today? Of course we are. What, 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 what's Susie making? She's making us some uh, pancakes. Made, made I'm it making some special anniversary pancakes. It's the, the anniversary of the oh. first time she made them for me. <laughs> it's true. Three years ago today was the first time I ever made my lovely Tommy boy some pancakes. And now, hey, what's up, dude? <laughs> dude look, you invited Gerard to our special day? You invited your wife to the game? <laughs> <laughs> what, does she wear the pants? <laughs> well, howdy, partner! Oh, you... howdy doody. Well, uh, is, this, is this your first day on the dude ranch? I absolutely is. I'm really excited. <laughs> you got that accent right down I even, pat. I even brought my own boots. I see. Those look great. You got spurs and everything. Uh -huh. Your legs are all cut up, but you know, that's okay. Yeah, You'll get used to it. That's great. Not everyone has knives at the end of their feet, so <laughs> it's okay. So, we're glad to have you here at the Dude Ranch. Yeah, so what are we going to be doing? We're going to be some milking some cows, uh, riding some bulls. Of course we... It's <laughs> <laughs> our biggest cow right here. We, we, uh, we taught it to how to stand. 
Yep, it, it, it likes to rest up on the fence. It's a very aggressive cow. So, but you know what? This is, this is the first part. I just lose my accent now and then. That's OK. That's fine. But the first part of the new ranch experience, get on up there and pull on some stuff. <laughs> I bet it will come out. I've read it. You, you got it, Files. All right. <laughs> now go on. Don't be afraid. Okay, yeah, all right. Not the first thing I thought you'd pull on. <laughs> Again, that's just the other side of that same yeah. all right, all right. So, uh, I'm going to lead you in the right direction, actually. Okay. You got these four udders right here. <laughs> that's where we get milk. Mm -hmm. Okay, why don't you go ahead and pull on this? Betsy, it's going to be okay. <laughs> <laughs> Can we go ahead and get another uh, word or suggestion from the audience, please? Yeah. Yeah. Grilled cheese. Charwell. You guys need to eat. Go have some dinner. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Any other words, suggestions? Fast food. Airplane. Airplane. I heard uh, roller coaster. That's all you heard? <laughs> That's uh, the only one word I heard. Very selective <laughs> hearing. <laughs> yeah, I no. Roller coaster. Can't lie, I'm kind of nervous. <laughs> Is this your first time? On a roller coaster. Okay, guys, keep oh. your uh, hands and feet on the in, uh, inside of this. Ah! Oh, sorry. Didn't start yet. I thought that was the hot. <laughs> okay. Yep. Are you going to come with us? Yeah, can you please come with us? I usually please. just stand on this stand and I take your picture because this is this is right at the top of the roller coaster. You just, you just, you just hang out up here? Love it. Best job around. Hey, um, when can we get going? We're kind of freaking out. You know, we're supposed to meet our parents for dinner yeah. three days ago. <laughs> this roller coaster is called the Teeter Totter. Yes. And, and what we do is we have you at the top for as long as you can just stay there. It's about as long as we can stay there. So yeah. you guys are the only two people here. I know. So just like a Teeter Totter, you're stuck on one side. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of sick joke is this? this Welcome to Six Flags. <laughs> this isn't fun at all. <laughs> You know, we've been trying to design a new roller coaster for the park, and we're just stuck in a few designs. I mean, the first one was just, you know, kind of got him to the top and mm -hmm. just it sat there yeah. indefinitely. Yeah. <laughs> the problem being, we only got one ride on that. Mm -hmm. But the, the park does charge per hour? Yes. We made a lot of money. And we did, <laughs> but I just feel like there's not enough customer satisfaction coming into the park. I feel like we could get some, some new ideas, you know, I mean, I hate to brag, but when I got my major at that Quinnipiac University for roller coaster design, <laughs> I picked up a few things, some great roller coaster design ideas. Great, lay them on me. Okay, so picture this. Mm -hmm. Loop de loop, right? Uh huh. Right at the top, someone standing there, flipping your pancakes, maybe shaped like a cowboy hat, and give it to you. Perfect. Right? Yeah. People love food. They love food. Possibly hungry. Always. <laughs> Especially at late night shows. Definitely. <laughs> I've seen that. All right, uh, what else? Um, well, see, my only problem with that is, you know, the syrup kind of tended to fall down onto the people on the lower part Gravity. of it. Gravity. Yeah. Okay, so when you put the roller coaster in space, mm. you don't have to worry about gravity. You know, that's an excellent idea. Oxygen. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. <laughs> is that? Yes, it is. It is me. Just say my name. <laughs> Pierre Valtese. Yes, so this is actually it. Is. Pierre Valtese. The world famous French roller coaster. Thank you for finishing my job title. <laughs> what are you, you doing here? You Six Flags. You designed the Eiffel Tower. Yes, <laughs> and the roller coaster alongside the Eiffel Tower. Yeah. It just goes up and goes down. It's not <laughs> impressive, but still Eiffel Tower, eh? Yeah. <laughs> What are you doing at our theme park? What do you mean, what am I doing? <laughs> you have won the roller coaster. It goes teeter tot. Yes. Uh, Not that impressive. Oh, so you think you've got a better idea than our space pancake coaster? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that is simply the worst. Yes, that is gross. That is simply the worst idea I've ever heard. I would have to say that you should have a roller coaster that that, that kills people. <laughs> people like death. 
They like zombies. I don't know. Incorporate that into, I, I'm just the idea guy. When they said, hey, we have an Eiffel Tower, I'm like, roller coaster? And they're like, whoa. It's pretty good, man. You want to kill people. No, 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 no. No, we, we would not kill people. Oh, yeah, he finish. He does not have a point. I mean, think about it. We're really trying to draw people in, right? You remember last year when two people died on King Ka, so we took it apart? Oh, yeah. worst idea ever. Keep it together. It kills people. <laughs> Maybe we should make an extreme King Ka. Mm, I, I usually put blades at the end of my roller coasters. <laughs> Simply just does the job perfectly. That's great. That's great. What are we going to call this super killing, death-defying, well, not defying, but defining <laughs> roller coaster? You know, we Germans could help you with that. Oh, <laughs> it is not Buto van Strutzer. Yes. <laughs> yes, you can bow to <laughs> us. <laughs> I, I, I'm, okay. Yes, you need help making ultimate killing machine? <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank God, Wunder von Strudel's here. <laughs> what kind of ideas do you got, Wunder von Strudel? Well, us Germans have perfected no gravity on Earth. <laughs> no. Mm, that yes. idea doesn't seem complicated at all. Tell us. <laughs> well, in detail, please. <laughs> I'm going to need my assistant. Yes, who are you? Can you tell them how the anti-gravity works? You want to know how the anti-gravity works? Sure, this man is very scary and ugly. <laughs> and I, I understand why he's your henchman. Are you henchman. talking about my hunchback? Yes, it is well, protruding. Is it out. Oh, this is how I figured it out, the gravity. Wait, don't tell me. Let's go. I want to hear it. The weight of gravity bared you down, that's why you came up with the idea? No, I was born this way. <laughs> <laughs> That was awesome. You guys are the best. Hey, all right, and yeah, yeah, the oh rest no, of you. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> love it, yeah. All right. Well, guys, that's our show. Thank you all for coming out. Yeah. All right. yeah. Tonight's show. Tonight's show is sponsored by the Student Programming Board. Go to the sixth annual Wake the Giant concert on Friday, May second, to see Capital Cities and do an opener scavenger hunt at the TD Bank Sports Center. A big thank you to SPB, to all of you in our studio audience, our guests, Professor Philip Cunningham, and the right amount of silence. One more time for them, folks. Thank you. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on the Twitter, uh, and we will see you all in two weeks for our season finale. Oh, it hurts, but I'll be here. I hope you will, too. Good night, everybody.